Hello and welcome to ESL Revolution, everyone. I am your content creator and professor, Dr. B. I'm not a real doctor. I hope you're all doing very, very well. And thank you so much for coming back and saying hello to the channel. Great. If you haven't done so before, don't forget, hit the sub button, hit the notification button. Weekly content is coming your way. That's right. Um, this is a special, special video for a, where's the name here? Parveen actor, Parveen actor. This is for you. Um, this goes to uh, Parveen who was in the live stream with Eric on Sunday. This is February, February 7th. That's right, February 7th. And uh, I was uh, fielding questions about uh, different apps and programs that can be used for teachers to encourage learning during the COVID times as we are all in now. And a question came up about Padlet. And I, I knew about the program. I have uh, dabbled with the program a little bit, but thought I would go in a little bit more uh, detail and actually do a video on behalf of uh, Parveen to help uh, explain what Padlet is and hopefully give you some tips and hints for that. So let's get started here. Um, the first thing that you will need to do, of course, is to do your uh, Google search for Padlet and there is the website padlet.com. You are beautiful. Yes, you are. All right, let's get right into it. And this is what we're, this is what we're going to see our first screen here. Um, this is just the uh, home screen. One thing I did want to make note of on the, on the screen is in the product tab here, you can go down and it says that uh, Padlet is available in 29 different languages. So your language might be available in the uh, through Padlet, which obviously will make it easier for your students and perhaps even you to, uh, to navigate the system, although it is fairly easy. Now, in order to sign up, we click the huh, sign up for free button. There we go. So we're going to do that. And um, I prefer to keep all of my uh, kind of keep all of my um, my sign-ins through my uh, Google account. Uh, so I'm going to use that. I'm going to do the Google and I'm going to choose uh, ESL Revolution, this one here. Very original, of course. And here we go. So here is our uh, Padlet, uh, our Padlet pad, <laughs> I guess. And you don't see really anything here. There's there's not much here, but right here we have a make a Padlet. Now, let me just say one thing here about the upgrade tab. Um, there are, with Padlet, you can have, you can create three pads for free. And then obviously the rest of those pads you would need to upgrade the account for. However, I think it's about $8 a month US. Um, 8,000 won here in Korea, maybe eight pounds in the UK, I don't know. Um, do you need an upgrade? At the beginning, I would recommend no, because you want to get used to using the program. Uh, and it obviously, you know, it will give you a chance to, to figure out how to use it well enough. And if you think that it's going to be an effective tool, then maybe consider going ahead and purchasing the upgrade. For me personally, I'm not going to do that right now, but it is something for you to consider. I also just want to let you know that I, this is a video is in no way affiliated with Padlet and I'm not being paid for them, paid by them to, to uh, you know, to drum up numbers or anything like that. It's just, it's one of those things that in my videos, I do want to make a note of there is a free version, there is a paid version, and I will leave it to you as the capable instructor to decide whether or not you think it's necessary. So I just wanted to point that out. Now, 
to make a Padlet. Let's go to make a Padlet. Here we go. Now, our first screen is going to be eight um, selections, eight possible selections. Um, we have wall, canvas, stream, grid, shelf, back channel, map, and timeline. Now, all of these can be particularly useful, and I don't want to go into all of them. However, if you are interested in one particularly, put a comment down below in the video and I will respond on how you might be able to use that or what it is specifically if you have a question about it. I would say the most common are going to be wall, grid, and shelf. Those are going to be the three probably most used uh, padlets. Uh, the others do have a place, so keep that in mind. I'm going to use wall just to uh, keep it simple for today's instruction. So I'm going to click on that. And there we go. Okay. So, oh. so you're going to see that I have, uh, there's my name there. And uh, I have the title. Here's the title here. And here's the description. But of course, I don't want my luminous Padlet. So I'm going to change the title. So I'm just going to say Padlet introduction and then description. Got to learn how to spell there. There we go. This Padlet is designed for instructional purposes. So as you can see over here, we have the, the title and the description right close to each other, which is quite, ni quite nice indeed. Now, continuing along with the kind of the settings for the Padlet, um, it says icon. Now, if you go to click on this, you're gonna see all sorts of uh, different emojis, etc., etc. But I like to actually put my own icons in there. So uh, I'm going to uh, upload my own image here. And I'm going to come down to this one right here, quality content. There we go. So you can see I've got the little quality content here on by my name. And I also have it here by the Padlet introduction because of course this is quality content. <laughs> All right, now wallpaper. Wallpaper is another thing that you can change around. And I like to actually have the wallpaper kind of connect with the theme that I'm teaching. So as I'm doing a digital demonstration and kind of, uh, you know, wanting to connect the digital to the real world, uh, I'm going to add another of my own images here. This is the digital, this one right here, Digital Learning Day. Digital Learning Day, that's right. That's exactly what it is. Um, so there we go. So I've added my own, uh, I've added my own uh, background to this. Now, there, if you go in here, there's solids, gradients, textures, and pictures. There's things that are already built into the Padlet system. However, Again, I just like to kind of connect the pad with the imagers, imagery rather, and having something kind of connect to the students so they're aware, oh, interesting, okay, so this topic is related to this image, etc. And it's, again, just another way of connecting all the points and helping the students along. Color scheme, I just keep it as it is, no big deal. Now, font here, you can see where I have the title, Padlet introduction, I can just change a couple of the fonts. There's four choices here. I actually like that one there, so I'm going to keep it. Now, down at the bottom here, I have uh, in the posting section right here, there are four uh, things that we want to consider. Now, attribution. Attribution is where uh, the name of the student will appear on the post that they create in the Padlet. Now, I think this is a good idea because it allows you as a teacher to see who is or perhaps who is not posting uh, where they should be. So I would just use the first name. That's fine. 
Now, if, however, there are perhaps a few students that have multiple first names, you might want to go ahead and use the last name. For me, I think the first name is fine. So I'm going to turn that on. I think that's a very useful skill, especially, especially just to keep things organized uh, for you. Now, comments. Comments, we definitely want to turn this on, allow viewers to comment on posts. What Padlet allows us to do in a particular pad is to allow students to interact with each other and with teachers to interact with students in a way to create the digital platform as a community, especially if students and teachers are not able to regularly see each other. This is a great way of extending the in-class community out into the digital world and to keep those relationships going, which of course during COVID-19 is essential for good teaching and good uh, educational awareness with the students. Um, now, the next one here is reactions. This one was an, is an interesting one, and I'm gonna leave this one up to your discretion. However, I just want to make note of what I think, for me, what I would do. A reaction is like a thumbs up or a smiley face or a heart via Facebook. And there's some pretty interesting research right now on how those have psychological effects both positively and negatively to students. If they have a post where they're getting a lot of likes, there's actually a dopamine release in the brain that creates those likes as a, as a high. And if you don't get any likes or any smiley faces or thumbs up on something, that can actually have a negative effect on one's, uh, essentially on one's self-esteem. So I like to keep these things off because I don't want the likes or the reactions to become a competition between my classroom, between the class students rather. And I think it's important for us to keep that in mind. There's no problem with students making comments, which allows for the language and the community to be maintained without having these thumbs up. So that's my opinion. I will leave it to you for you to decide. Now, the last thing I want you to uh, be aware of is this one right here, require approval. And this is a way for you as a teacher to essentially moderate what is going to be coming into the Padlet. So let's say student A makes a Padlet uh, or has a response. You can then check the response to make sure that it's okay and go ahead and approve. Now, there's one thing about this for you as a teacher that you need to understand. Padlet is more of an immediate response uh, program, which means that you may have multiple students needing to have those, um, those uh, responses or uploads or whatever fairly instantaneously. So it's important for you to maintain your approval as quickly as you can. My recommendation would be if you are not in your classroom at any given time, make sure Padlet is attached to your phone and download the app. That way, if something comes in for approval, you can hit OK right away. Um, OK, so once those are done, you can go ahead and click Save and there we go. So we are now good to go. We have our uh, Padlet introduction. Now, hmm, there's still nothing here. So what do we do? Well, down in the right corner here, bottom corner, you see that there is a pink, a pink uh, plus. Let's go ahead and click that. Now, um, well, now what? So now we have this little square here and uh, let's just give this square a title, shall we? Um, so let's say I wanted to introduce Flipgrid 
to my students uh, via a video that I created and uploaded onto YouTube. Well, um, now I'm gonna just write a little something here. I'm gonna say, uh, students, good morning. Please watch the video uh, in this pad. Um, Please comment if you have any questions. Okay, so there we go. Now, I want to upload the video. Okay, so I'm going to pick a file here, and this is on my desktop. And, oh, I'm sorry, actually, this was, this was uh, the wrong program. I actually meant it to do storyboard that because we talked about that in our in our live uh, live episode with Eric so my apologies so we have this here and oh, oh no 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 so I want to edit okay so if you happen to do that where you click off screen and you're like oh no how do I get it back just click that little pencil button that's your edit post now I want to upload that video. So I'm gonna to go to pick file and I'm gonna to go to my desktop and I'm gonna do storyboard that introduction and click on that. Oh no, it's too big. Okay, well, you know what? That's okay. <laughs> I did that on purpose. Um, so you can then go to, let's say I'm gonna to go to my YouTube channel now and Click on, I'm gonna click on my videos. Now, what I want to do is I want to find that. Uh, I want to find that video. So I'm gonna do storyboard that. Oop. Help if I spell it right. There we go. Now, I want to look at the introduction here. There we go. And there is the copy link. And I'm going to I'm going to go back here and I'm going to copy paste bing bang boom done. There you go. So, uh, students then can comment on this if they have any questions. There's the comments right there. The nice thing about Padlet as well, uh, when let's say I put a video in there, I can actually watch the video directly from Padlet. I don't need to go to, Hello, you know, it's not gonna, welcome. it's not gonna open up, uh, it's not gonna open up YouTube. You can just watch it right from there. It makes it very, very convenient. Now, so that's essentially how you might want to use this program. It's a very basic thing. Uh, but I think this uh, helps you get started. Of course, if you've got any questions, by all means, please let me know in the comments uh, below. Um, I will absolutely give you a hand uh, if you have any additional uh, questions about that. Okay, I hope you have a great day, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. And Parveen, I hope this really, really helps you. If you have any particular questions, again, by all means, comment down below. Thanks very much and have a great day. We'll see you later. Take care, everybody. Peace.